It's in that song. Dying Breed, the second track on the new album, Blind Rage, from Accept, which comes out in stores tomorrow. In the studio with me right now is the band's lead singer, Mark Tornillo. We're going to welcome in on the phone in a second the Riff Master Supreme, Mr. Wolf Hoffman from Accept. Also joining us in the studio is Doro. She has a special edition of Raise Your Fist, 30 years anniversary edition coming out in October as well as some U.S. dates. How many shows are you doing in America? Actually, we are doing um, 10 shows in America and uh, Canada, and it starts on the 10th of October, yeah, 20th is the year in New York, and then we are doing another long tour in March next year. But now, yeah, we started off. You know how much I love to play America, so, yeah. Where are you living these days? Are you in the U.S. or in Germany? Yeah, both. Um, I still have problems with my home in Long Island. Because of the storm, right? Long mm -hmm. Beach, yeah. It's now a while ago, but there's still some you know, some more work to do, so so I'm mattress hopping. And, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. But I'm always on the road, and it's, uh, it's okay. And, yeah. Right, right. I have to hang in there. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's let uh, Mr. Hoffman get involved in the conversation a little bit. We go to the phone line now and welcome from his compound in Nashville, Mr. Wolf Hoffman. How are you, Wolf? I'm awesome. How are you guys? Hey, Doro. Hey, hello. Nah, good to hear you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the history here with you guys? Doro said the first time she saw you, Wolf, was in 1982. Oh, oh, that gives away my age, uh, I guess. Yeah, that goes way back, huh? Back, yeah. back when you had hair, right? That's right. The Judas Priest to her. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, she said, she told a great story before. I don't know if you were listening, that she went to see you on the Judas Priest tour, and she was raving about how great Priest was, and it turned out it was actually you. Priest hadn't gone on yet. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Must I didn't have been that that before. That's fun. Yeah. I remember that tour. It's a long time ago, of course. Yeah. 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 So, so how's things going, man? Well, everybody is excited about this new record. We played a couple tracks already. Album number three with Mark. How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling great. Uh, finally, the wait is over. It's out in the public, and everybody can have, uh, you know, can have it and hear it. And I'm super excited. Finally, we can stop trying to hide it. <laughs> exactly. And it's a miracle that it hasn't been leaked earlier. But you know, we did it. I think it's been great. Isn't that the the hardest thing now? When I would think when you make a record is to have to sit on it and not be able to share it so quickly with people because it's so dangerous now for it to get out there. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Yeah, but uh, we managed and uh, finally it's here and I'm super excited. I've done a ton of interviews already, but uh, now the fans get to hear it for themselves, finally. And it's got all the trademark, as I was telling Mark when we were listening, it's got all the, the trademark greatness uh, that people have expected from your band. I mean, it's amazing. As I was saying earlier, this is like, I look at this as like Accept Mark II. It's obviously it's so connected to the history of the band, but it's uh, the whole new coat of paint that Mark brings and the consistency with these three records from Blood of the Nations to Stalingrad to this one is amazing. I mean, they're just all right there. There's been no... There's been no slip-ups along the way, it doesn't sound like to me. Yeah, well, I would have to agree. It feels to me like it's a brand new beginning. It doesn't feel to me like this is album number 14 or whatever. It feels like number three. When you got together to work on this record, and Mark chime in as well, was there any things that you wanted to set out to maybe do a little bit differently? Was there any different goal in mind versus the previous two? I mean, there wasn't anything that we wanted to do differently, per se. It just better really it was my my goal to write the exact same sort of songs only better you know and we wanted to give mark a little more room to do some more melodic stuff i mean if you listen to some of the songs like um uh, fall of the empire or the curse i think we are really showcasing the other mark not just the high pitch you know in your face screaming kind of mark it's, it's more of the sort of the you know the singing part and that's the only thing we wanted to do other than that we just wanted to write more of the same we wanted the same producer same sound let's just work on the songs as much as we can and put all our money in, onto that all our time and effort into the songs really and we had the time to do it this time which was nice yeah you know we didn't we weren't in a rush like with Stalingrad we would really had almost eight or nine months to, to work it all out and to demo the songs up and we had plenty of material when we actually went into the studio so it was uh, quite of a quite a luxury to have all that time and all the material when we finally did go into the studio and Mark
not for you. I mean, the part about singing a little bit more has to feel like it lightens the load on you a little bit. I mean, if it's, I mean, it's got to be easier, I would think, to sing, you know, bring that part of your voice out than always trying to scream like somebody's got your nuts in a vice. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well put. <laughs> I mean, not that that's not cool and you don't do that perfectly, but I mean, it's, uh, you just said, even though you, you still look like you're a kid, I mean, you, you, it's got to be tough to do that night in and night out, right? It's, uh, it's demanding. Let's put it that way. It's demanding, and especially when night in and night out, trying to save it and make it work day after day, you know, especially when you're on tour and you're doing four or five shows in a row. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's that's what impressed us when we met Mark those five years ago. You know, he could really do those, the old songs like, you know, Fast as a Shark and, and Starlight and all that really, you know, he could really do it and deliver it. And uh, you can do it every night. And we actually, I might add, we're actually playing everything still in the original key. It's not like some guys who are actually dropping the tuning down to help the singer out. We're not even doing that. Yeah, so. thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mark was just telling us why the song was playing. Damn, I wish these guys would drop the key a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we might get there one day. But nah. Yet. That's for sissies. Yeah, or or you could do the real the real sellout that a lot of bands do and put it on tracks and not hey, even do it live. There you go. Yeah, no, you're talking. Oh no, that's weak. You don't want don't want to do that. I I like as they say warts and all. That's what a live experience is about. So yeah. I think you're you're totally right with that. Yeah, you hit a couple clams along the way. You roll with it. That's what being live is all about. That's what I make a nice recovery. <laughs> I saw I saw Mark sing at a charity gig a couple weeks ago in Jersey where somebody else started singing that wasn't supposed to be him from the stage. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> you want to talk about a virtual moment? That was the most incredible thing. Mark's nowhere near a mic, and I go, what is he, running samples in a, in a little club? Somebody grabbed your mic in the crowd. It wasn't it's my mic. It's somebody <laughs> in the crowd had one of the microphones, and he's standing in front of him. I'm, I'm looking around. I'm going, who, well, who is singing? I'm looking at Scott and, and the other guys on stage. I'm going, well, nobody's near the mic. Where the hell is it coming from? I'm looking back at the board, and I'm going, and then I see this kid in the front. He's got the mic. I'm like, give me that. <laughs> give me that damn mic. It's, oh, I was pissed. Was, I never saw Mark that mad. The kid, this guy, just standing there in the front row, pulled him another mic down. And I, for what song was it, Mark? Because it was like I a don't even scream remember and like what a, song it was. It was like I think it was Judas Priest. Oh, oh it was too funny. Oh my gosh! I'm and I'm in the crowd, and I'm like, nobody's near a microphone, and there's this voice coming out. Oh, that was funny. Oh, what is, somebody, funny afterwards. Somebody, it wasn't funny. Then. I know. Somebody, I scared the shit out of that kid. <laughs> I, I think he thought I was going to kill him. I thought you were too. Uh, everybody's feeling charitable, a fundraiser, and Mark beats the shit out of a guy. <laughs> oh, too funny. So, Wolf, you excited about doing this live? I know these guys were talking earlier. You already played in Germany, right? Absolutely. Hell yeah, man. Uh, we're just getting ready to rehearse those songs now. Uh, we're just going through the set list and figuring which which ones of those are going to work best. And yeah, can't wait, man. Well, that's the real challenge: having the catalog of except that you have from the early stuff, and then um, obviously these three great records now with Mark. I, I guess you want to do a balance, but I don't know how you you find a, a balance of all the great material but without playing a four-hour show. Yeah, but you know that's. That's a good problem to have, I think. I'm not, we're not complaining. Yeah, yeah man. no doubt, no doubt. Well, listen, man, I'm going to uh, play another song from, from Blind Rage and then uh, talk a little bit more with Mark and Doro, and then we're going to be out of time. So I just wanted to get you on for a couple minutes to say hello and congrats on the record, another great one, and look forward to seeing you live soon. Hopefully I can get over to the, the show at the Gramercy here in New York and at least catch the second half. But uh, I, You better, man. You better. Well, I, I have this little thing called a job that I'm doing right now that I kind of have to do. How does that work? What does that, that have? No idea. What is that? Define that. Well, listen, I could be digging ditches, so talking on the radio and playing music is, is, is hardly know, a job. I know. Speaking of, speaking of jobs, are you still doing your photography? Less and less, man. I don't have the time. Uh, I've done quite a fair of shoots, a uh, bit of shoots last year, but this year only a handful, really, only because I've been working day and night on this except stuff, you know, so there's really literally no time right now. But I want to. I'd like to keep it going as long as I can. I love it. Well, listen, man, um, I'm going to let you go. Say hello to your wife and also uh, okay. the rest of the guys. And what's your favorite song on the new record? I'll play that right now. 
Uh, actually, <laughs> you already did. Uh, Dying Breed is one of them. Uh, Final Journey. That's a pretty cool one, I think. Final Journey is the last song on the record. What's the story behind this one? Well, uh, the end of life experience. Mark, you can... Yeah, you the story is enough. everybody's going to take that final journey and you just don't know... Uh, you're go you're damn sure going alone. <laughs> so, Mark, so morbid. What are you, what hey, are you doing? Come on, you're is. ending... What, should, really nice way to end the record on an up oh. note. Hey! This is metal. It's about, it's supposed it's to be... metal. Fun. What are you guys turning into King Diamond on me? What are you no. doing? No. <laughs> Come on, we've, we've got the nice classical moment in this one. It's... Uh, it's, yeah. it's quite a lovely song. All right. Well, I, of course it is. I'm just having some fun. All right. I'll, uh, I'll see you soon, Wolf. Take care. Auf Wiedersehen. Viel Glück für die Platte. Oh, danke. Tschüss. Yeah, hey, Bis talk dann. to you soon, bro. Yeah, okay. man. I'll see you in a bit. See you, man. Whatever they just said. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so here's one more from Accept, and we'll come back and we'll finish up with a little bit more time here with Mark and Doro in the studio. What's been a very busy edition of Eddie Trunk Live, Trunk Nation. If there's time for calls, I'd love to get a few calls on, so maybe we can squeeze a couple quick ones in before we have to end at 10 o'clock Eastern. 866-315-2663. Uh, this is the final song on the new Accept record, Final Journey.